It's really no surprise to me that tower gardens have exploded in popularity. I mean, they're incredibly easy to maintain. The yield can be insane. They only take up like four square feet of floor space, yet you can grow like 20 to 30 full-size large plants. So whether you're a DIY master and you created your own tower garden or you shelled out some cash for a manufactured one like the Juice Plus one behind me here, you're still gonna need to think about how to populate your tower garden. Unless, of course, you're monocropping, and in which case, you can kind of stop watching this video right now. This isn't about somebody who's growing 20 heads of the same lettuce in your tower garden. This is about somebody who wants to utilize their single tower garden to grow as much as they possibly can and optimize that growth. I think the first thing that needs to be established is a general pH for your garden. Now, some people will say, a lot of people will say that a pH of 7.0 is a great general pH to have all your gardens set at and you kind of can't go wrong with a pH of 7.0. Well, I'm going to include this list which goes over a bunch of plants and their preferred pHs and you'll notice that not a lot go over 7.0. So I actually prefer to come up with my own average hydroponic garden pH and here's how I do it. So I'm gonna use my last tower garden build as a blueprint here. And this is what I had growing. Uh, so I went ahead and came up with an average pH for each one of my plants. And I added all of those up and then divided it by the number of plants to come up with a garden average of 6.43. We'll say 6.4. So that is what I'll keep my garden at. And I recommend you do the same thing to figure out what your garden's pH should be set at. So now when it comes to populating your garden, there are two main factors to consider here. How big is the plant going to get and how big are the roots going to get? Now this is really important because the bottom two levels will eventually have their roots soaking in the nutrient water. And this is no problem at all. That's basically just a DWC or a deep water culture. And that's just fine. But consider that the plants that have their roots completely hanging in the tower and are just receiving the drip of nutrient water, they're probably gonna grow a little bit better and a little bit faster, but it becomes a compromise. You really don't wanna have plants with huge root systems growing at the top of your garden because those roots would just block the way for everything else below them. So you really need your larger plants to be on the bottom two levels with about 40% of their roots hanging in air and about 60% under the water by the time you harvest. So on the very first row, I always plant my vines and I always try to get them away from the garden as quickly as possible. In my last setup, I just wrapped the surrounding area in chicken wire so that all the vines could grab onto that as soon as they could and start growing outside of the little area of the tower garden. So the bottom's where I have my cucumbers, my sugar snap peas, my cantaloupe, my beans, and that always worked really well for me. All right, moving up to the second level where I would plant my tomatoes, my bell peppers, my jalapenos. Your plants that are gonna grow big and kind of bushy, but the beautiful things with these kind of plants is that you have the opportunity to groom them in ways that you can, you can sort of train the plant to grow how you want it to by either trellising certain branches or pruning certain branches. They also have pretty large and elaborate root systems that, that need to make their way down to the DWC as well. All right, well, above that on the third level, this is where I go for my huge, giant, leafy plants like cabbage, like cauliflower, broccoli, the plants that grow really close to the garden but send these huge, hardy crowns of leaves around them. These plants sort of take no prisoners and will push anything out away from them. That's why I feel like they're great to be on the third level. Now above the giant leafed plants, that's where I would put my herbs, cilantro, my dill, my basil, rosemary, thyme, all the good stuff. And herbs tend to grow straight up and kind of bush out a little bit. And then a little quick tip with your herbs. If you use herbs that are in the mint family, they actually have really shallow roots. So if you're trying to put herbs in your garden and leave them there for a long time, even up to years, um, pick herbs in the mint family and that should be no problem for you. So then above the herbs, that's where I plant all my leafy greens, my kale, spinach, bib lettuce, romaine. And then a thing to consider with the top level with your leafy greens, make sure you plant stuff that you really like to eat because the top level grows like crazy. There are no roots above uh, impeding the, the nutrient water and there are no plants above on the outside blocking the light. So all of your leafy greens are gonna grow like crazy. We ended up with more kale than we could eat, but that's not really a bad thing for us. So I hope this video really helped you to populate your garden. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the notifications, and let's grow together. Thank you.